Okay, in this video, we're going to learn about graphing cosecant and secant. And then we're going to do some modifications to, you know, do some phase shifts, you know, change some periods and things like that for a parent function. So let's go ahead and take a look. Cosecant. I'm going to start off with that one. So if I'm going to graph y equal the cosecant of x, well, I need to think about what this is related to. Well, it's a reciprocal function. What was the reciprocal of the cosecant? Well, it is the one over the sine. If I take one over the sine, that gives me the cosecant. So if I remember anything about the graph of sine, I should know, of course, that the period is 2 pi. Okay, so this is a little bit of facts about the cosecant graph. So what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, graph first the sine function. So I'm putting my 1 and my negative 1. And I've got all the points from 0 to 2 pi that I need in order to graph the sine function. So let's think about that for a second. I'm going to plot those points. So I'm going to graph, of course, a point here at 0 because sine at sine of 0 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Okay, let's put that point there. Sine of pi is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And sine of 2 pi is, again, 0. And then we play that little classic game of connect the dots. So let me draw this here in blue because we actually don't need it. Okay, we actually don't need it. We need to draw the cosecant graph, but we're going to use the sine graph. Okay, so what this does is remember that if the sine is zero at some point, well, now it's in the denominator for cosecant. It actually does not exist there. Okay, because what ends up happening is you have asymptotes. You can't divide by zero, in other words. So this creates some asymptotes here for our cosecant graph. And what ends up happening is we use the sine to actually guide what, what it is that we're going to do here. So let's see there. My cosecant graph actually looks like this. And some people will say, well, it kind of looks like a parabola. All right, and let's draw that here as well. Okay, you see it stays within the asymptotes. So the cosecant graph is not the sine graph at all. But the sine graph helps us in establishing what the cosecant graph looks like. Because the cosecant graph actually, you see how I just removed that sine graph? The cosecant is just this part shown in black here. All right, but we use the sine curve in order to come up with the graph for cosecant. Okay, so similar thing happens with the graph of secant. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. If I have y equal the secant of x, well, I need to remember one thing. And that is that the secant was 1 over the cosine of x. Okay, and the other thing about cosine that I need to remember was that the period was 2 pi. So very similar to the period here of secant. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph the uh, cosine. So let me put my 1 and my negative 1. I'm going to graph the cosine. And I know that on cosine it starts at 1. At pi over 2 it hits 0. At pi it hits negative 1. At 3 pi over 2 it hits 0. And at 2 pi it hits 1 again. Okay, so now I'm going to play that game of connect the dots, if you will. It looks something like this, something like this. And I'm trying my very best to draw this. I'm a terrible artist, I'll tell you that. Looks just like that, like an upside down bell, the, the cosine graph. Now, um, again, 1 over the cosine, we have to look at places where cosine is equal to 0 because those actually are points that do not exist on the graph of secant. So that creates the case of asymptotes. So that happens there, that happens there. All right. And so the cosecant graph, I'm sorry, the secant graph actually looks something like this. Watch looks kind of like half a parabola, if you will. Okay. And another half a parabola there, and in the center, like a full parabola. But what ends up happening, if you're looking at the at another period of the graph, it actually continues like that. And it's, it's actually more round in shape. I just, again, I say I can't draw. Okay, so it looks something, you know, I'll let you use your imagination there. But again, the cosine graph, we used to help construct, so we don't need it anymore. So the graph of secant is actually these parts remaining in black, again with, of course, the asymptotes that 
that are involved there. Okay, so really nothing to it to graph cosecant or secant. So let's go ahead and take a look at another set of graphs where we can actually uh, do some transformation. So let's take a look at the first function. I'm going to give you y equal one half of the cosecant of 2x. So I'm going to note a few things. The first thing I'm going to note is a change in amplitude, and that is that it is one half. Okay, it's about it is 0.5. Okay, one half, if you will. The k value here is two. The k value here is two. So where before the period was um, two pi. All right, I'm going to take two pi now, and I'm going to divide it by two. So the new period is going to be pi units. All right. So again, it's going to look almost exactly like this parent up here at the top uh, with some minor adjustments. And that is that the the pi, I'm going to go ahead and divide into four, four pieces. So here's zero. This first one here will be pi over four, because to find those tick marks, you cut it into four slices. The next one, two pi's over four, which is pi over two. The next one, 2 pi over 4 plus another pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. And you add another pi over 4 and you get 4 pi over 4, which is just pi. Okay, so it's going to look exactly like the parent up here at the top for the uh, cosecant graph. All right. But, all right, some minor adjustments for the period and for the amplitude. So I'm going to count, let's say right here, this to be half, if you will, and one, two, three, four units down. I'm going to call this negative half. All right. Otherwise, the asymptotes stay pretty much the same. All right. That doesn't change. Uh, they mirror where they were before, midway at the beginning and at the end. So we have our asymptotes there. All right. And we can again draw based on what we just found out, we can use the graph of sine, which looked like this. Okay, this is the traditional graph of sine, if you will. And let me connect it in blue. Okay, I'm going to use this to help guide my graph of the cosecant function. So it looks something like that kind of parabolic, it looks like it's not actually a parabola but you know whatever works to get you to understand right and then of course we get rid of that sine curve and that's what that graph would look like there those two black portions there all right so let's take a look at one last example and we're going to piggyback off of this idea that we started with which is one half the cosecant of 2x but in this case we're going to take the same concept and now we're going to shift it all right we're going to shift it in a direction. So let's shift this one. So here again, k equals 2. All right, let's make some notes here. The amplitude is the same. All right, so the amplitude is uh, 1 half. All right, I'll put 0 0.5 just for clarity. The period is going to be the same as before. So 2 pi divided by 2, which is just pi. Okay, but this one in this case is going to be shifted. So it's got a phase shift. And it remember, the uh, I have students that will tell me, well, sir, the parentheses lie to you. All right, it says plus pi over 4, but this actually moves pi over 4 in the negative direction. So pi over 4 to the left. All right, this one moves pi over 4 units to the left. So where before we were at 0, okay, so I'm going to denote my 0 here. All right, and let me erase this point there. didn't mean to put that there. I'm going to put all the points, 0, pi over 4, and I'm, I'm just copying the ones that I had already drawn, pi over 2, um, 3 pi over 4, and pi. And then I'm going to toss in negative pi over 4 here. All right, so what ends up happening is everything is going to shift this direction. All right, so the new center will be really right there at where the amplitude was. Uh, this is going to get shifted again right there. So that's what's going on here. Um, if you if you can see it on on that graph there, the origin the, the first one we did here, uh, this next one is just going to be a shift. So the um, the stuff kind of moves around. Uh, 
All right, the, the new asymptotes now are at negative pi over four rather than at zero. Uh, pi over four rather than pi over two. And where else? It looks like three pi over four rather than pi. So that basically shifts everything for us. All right, again, we can draw our graph of sine, if you will. It looks something like that. And I know one, one thing I forgot to plug in here is the one half and the negative one half right about there. There we go. All right, now we're good. Uh, so now we're going to draw again the graph of sine just for the sake of um, using it as our guide. And so I'm going to sketch that here in blue and then I'm going to erase it when I don't need it anymore. All right, so there's my graph of sine. Now let's do the cosecant. The cosecant is this right here that I'm drawing in black. All right, cosecant here and here. All right, and that is pi, the period of it. We get rid of the sine graph, and that's what it looks like. It's shifted, so notice the difference in comparing this right here to this right here, you should clearly see the phase shift that it was moved. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same in terms of period, in terms of amplitude. It's just we picked up and grabbed that point. So it's really neat that we can actually do this kind of stuff that we can just move it and pluck, you know, pluck the points and move them and shift everything over uh, uh, in the amount of space that we need to move it. So uh, again, a couple of really nice examples on cosecant and secant parent functions and then some translations and some changes to the period and amplitude and things like that so as always i hope this video was helpful and remember like and subscribe